You all right? Yeah? Right, they say uh, comedy should be something that's relatable. So if you haven't been to a supermarket, have you ever been to a supermarket? You have 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 been to a supermarket? Yeah. Right. I was in the supermarket the other day because I'm relatable. I'm one of them comedians. I'm not one of these ones, you know, that's like distant, unreachable. See? Reachable, that's me. That's me. I'm the relatable, reachable guy who goes to the supermarket. And there I was. I was looking box after box after box after box of tissues, right? But all I could see was facial tissues, and I was looking for crying, wanking, alone tissues, so... <laughs> <laughs> and that's a joke about how modern society has ruined a perfectly acceptable word. Uh, but whilst I was in the supermarket, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get some alphabet spaghetti. Do you remember alphabet spaghetti? Do you remember alphabet spaghetti? Do you remember alph fucking love alphabet spaghetti, right? But because of the, like, the, the cutbacks and that, the cost of living crisis, the increased cost of materials, right? They've had to make drastic changes that's now only available in lower case. Um, right. Which is a joke for anyone who works in the pasta industry, because obviously you're all idiots. The best way to save money while manufacturing pasta shapes, right, is not to halt production, change the extrusion machines all around, retool everything, right, and then remake pasta in a different shape. Actually, what you just do is you just change the pasta to sauce ratio and maybe just reduce the contents like 10% or something like that. <laughs> More fool you guys for laughing. Right, um, but I love alphabet spaghetti. It reminds me of being at my nana's, right? When I was a kid, I'd go to my nana's and I'd get alphabet spaghetti and it'd be on bread, right? But it wasn't just bread, right? It was slightly toasted. Only slightly though, because you know, you don't want to go wild with the toasting, right? And they'd build really cheap bread, right? And then the other thing is, I'd start my stopwatch about there, right? As though that's the beginning of the set because I'm a genius, right? And then the other thing that would happen, right, would be I'd be there, I'd be eating alphabet spaghetti on really, really thin bread. Do you remember? Do you remember eating alphabet spaghetti on thin, thin bread? Do you remember? Do you remember that? Do you remember? Do you remember? He doesn't remember. Do you remember? Do you remember we were there? We're eating? I don't remember you being there. I don't know what you... Why you... Can... Did you know my nana? Did you? Did you? Oh, she was lovely, wasn't she? I love my nana. She was um, she's no longer with us. She was about 83 when she died. Just just like Al Pacino. You know Al Pacino? Everyone familiar with Al Pacino? Anyone familiar with Nora Fowler? You know Nora Fowler? Anyone hands up if you know Nora Fowler? No? Okay, does anyone know Al Pacino's 29-year-old pregnant girlfriend? Yeah, Nora Fowler, right? You need to be identifying people by who they are, not who their partner is. Okay, that's a lesson for the future, Otley. Right, I expected more from you guys, right? But... Al Pacino, who's the same age as my nana was when she passed, right? Is dating a 29 year old, so they're having a child together, which is the equivalent of me dating and getting pregnant. Someone who's born in eight years time. <laughs> yeah. That's not even the creepiest thing I've ever said in comedy either, you know, it's, it's disconcerting. Yeah, so, um, but anyway, I, I used to love going to my nana's, right? I used to love going to my nana's. She had an outdoor toilet. For the two of you who are under 30, sitting toward the back somewhere, we went, we went look at us showing off. <laughs> Young people, right? Um, she had an outdoor toilet, an outdoor toilet specifically for you. I know some of you have still got outdoor toilets, right? Because we are Otley, right? But there's newbies coming in, right? And they need to learn, right? It's a bit like a port loo right? But the walls are made from fear and spiders, okay? <laughs> Regardless of the time of year, the seat is made from ice. It's an amazing achievement. Someone needs to look into the physics behind it, right? It's, it's amazing, right? But I, as a kid, like, I was terrified of going in there. The spiders the size of my head, right? I don't know why I was measuring them up against my face. I don't think that helped my fear of spiders, right? But I was terrified and it was cold, it was dark, it was dirty and everything, right? But my nana, she lived through a lot, right? She lived through bombings, when the, you know, the aeroplanes and that. What's it called? The Second World War. There you go. <laughs> Memory is an amazing thing. I look forward to getting it someday, right? She lived through the Second World War. She lived through bombings. She lived through rationing. She lived in Sunderland all her fucking life. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> she lived through a lot. So she never had that fear. She never faced that fear, right? Because she was incontinent, so she didn't really have to go. <laughs> outside to the 
right? <laughs> and that's the level of empathy that's taken me to. I mean, this this is this is obviously my main career, but alongside the seven pound I get for doing gigs like this on a Friday night in small, uh, like suburban towns on the edge of uh, cities, right? Um, I work in the NHS, right, just to earn a bit of pin money, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, my job is I design the forms for nurses to tick all the boxes on. It's, it's great fun, it's really rewarding for me, and then I just put my feet up, just knock out a couple of them every day, it's great fun. Um, but yeah, that's the level of empathy that brought me working for the NHS, right? And one of my favourite bits of the NHS, I don't think everyone's aware of it, it's called NHS, I can't remember, bloody hell. Um, NHS, oh my word, why is my brain not working? It's not called NHS Direct. Why would I not remember this thing? Right, this is really good bit of the NHS, right, where you can report anyone who is like ripping off the NHS, pharmacists who are doing wrong things, right? You can, uh, you can report nurses who's killing people and that, right? It's brilliant, right? And it's got a specific name, it's called NHS Resolution. Woo there you go, I got it, yes. Screw you, Saul, in the video, watching me back, going, he's not going to remember, is he? I did, I remembered, right? Okay, future Saul don't know anything. I mean, I, I look like future Daniel from the first half, and now I'm talking to future Saul, who just looks like Al Pacino getting a 29-year-old woman pregnant. Right, anyway, so there's this bit called Hennish's Resolution that deals with, like, law cases and things like that, but also it's got a tip line, right? So you can ring it up, you can report anyone who's taken the piss out of the NHS, taken all the money, right? I ring it up two, three, four, seven times a day. I say, Matt Hancock, I put the phone down again, right? <laughs> uh, I would encourage you all to do the same as well. It's great fun, it's great fun. And I, it's really easy as a comedian to be mean about politicians, right? So, for example, right, you know Rishi Sunak, right? Rishi, has anyone heard of little Rishi Sunak, right? <laughs> little Rishi Sunak, right? He's the Prime Minister of the country. Last year, when little Rishi Sunak was in competition with Liz Truss, you know, the lettuce woman, right? Little Rishi Sunak, right? Was the same height as the lettuce woman, right? The same height, little Rishi Sunak, right? Now he's an inch and a half taller than her, right? That's how small a man he is that he's got the internet to tell you he's an inch and a half taller. It's one of those kind of mid-40s growth spurts we all have, don't we? You know, little Rishi Sunak, right? But he was on holiday in America over the summer, little Rishi Sunak, right? And uh, he said he's really looking forward to going to Disneyland, little Rishi Sunak, right? And I thought, I bet you fucking are, mate. A lot of the rides at Alton Towers have got to be this tall, haven't you? Yeah? Uh, but yeah, politicians are easy to be mean about, like that tiny little man, right? Um, but, like, there's one politician that I absolutely refuse to do any jokes about, right? Because I believe you should never be rude about anyone in front of their children, so never take the piss out of Boris Johnson. Because in a room of any given size in this country, there's an absolutely real risk. Thank you very much. I've been Saul Henry. Quite a lot of alphabet humour tonight, hasn't there? Wow! I thought it was a, a culprit for mathematicians at one point, but it isn't. Right, we're going to have another break. Before you go any break, though, there's a bucket just over there, a white bucket, that my lovely brother there is holding up. We've got some pens and papers. This is for the last section this evening. We need you to write down a phrase or sentence on a piece of paper for us, fold it up, throw it in the bucket. We'll be using them when we come back. But enjoy your 15 minute break. Do those for us, that'd be lovely. And we'll be back. Thank you very much. <laughs> A phrase, a word, or a sentence? A phrase, a word, or a sentence, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to follow them, put them in the bucket, we're going to see them. 